anything else that you might want to understand regarding the kind of work that i have been doing mm-hmm. so what i do is i'll probably just give a brief introduction about myself sure. we can do the same for you and sure. uh, maybe we can just take it from there so mostly sure. it's just a casual conversation uh, sure. yeah. uh, so i have 9 years of experience overall it's around 10 including my internship but yeah, i have 9 uh, mm-hmm. years of professional experience per se mm-hmm. i started my career with um, emc square so later it became delhi emc um, and it had a division called rsa which was the security division Mm-hmm. so i was with them for around 4 uh, years as a so i started as a tester i did testing for around 7 months then i moved to development i did some android development then i moved to java backend development and uh, post that i was with so after you know, uh, i think i lost you in the middle uh, uh, can you hear me now yeah i can hear you now i, okay. I, I think i lost you in the middle okay uh, yeah Yeah, so I was saying, yeah, I started my career with the EMC. I was with them for around four years, uh, eventually working as a Java backend developer. Then, post that, I moved to Oracle. Uh, mm-hmm. With Oracle, also I was uh, into secure, like the domain was loosely security. It was their cloud security, so it was a product okay. in OCI, and I worked for them. So I had a short stint at Oracle. Uh-huh. Um, then I moved to Walmart, and uh, with Walmart, I was with the e-commerce division. Okay. And uh, in the e-commerce division specifically, I was into the fulfillment management system. So. Basically, the entire post checkout flow once an order oh. is dropped from there till it reaches the DC. Okay. And now I've been with Microsoft for the last almost almost two years now, and I work with the calendar platform team. So, so we look into everything related to calendar, uh, right from scheduling to say sharing of calendars, everything. So this is like the core backend of calendars, and it's based on I'm based out of Bangalore. Mm-hmm. Uh, and most recently, when I joined Microsoft, that's when I did my uh, like proper focus preparation. Before that, I had been giving interviews, not getting oh, through. But Microsoft yeah. was a time when I did like proper two to three months of uh, streamlined preparation and gave mm-hmm. a lot of companies. Um, yeah, so and um, that's it about me. If you can also just give me okay. a brief here. Uh, so my name is Arvind Kasle. I have around like ten, eleven years experience, total experience. so i started i started working with uh, a small product based company in mumbai so i worked there for around 2 to 2 and a half i, I was i was a software developer there uh, predominantly on ruby on rails okay so entirely it has been software development but uh, the technologies have varied a bit uh, i'm predominantly a java developer but i have some experience with ruby i have some experience with go i have some experience with python um, from 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 a small company in mumbai i moved to amdocs in pune uh so again there i was a senior software developer i worked there for around two and a half years so two and a half years in the first company two and a half years in the second company and i have been with uh, so right now i'm working with app direct uh, which is again a software company it is a product based company uh, which is based out of usa yeah uh, and it's 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 predominantly a software as a service uh, a play store kind of thing for big okay. uh, e-commerce giant and and telco giants so as to speak uh, so there i i work as a staff software developer uh, i work as a group architect for certain teams okay. so i have kind of like exposure around java and and go and python here so yeah that's that's that has been my journey so far okay but again and, yeah. i i never did like proper focused uh, focused uh, learning for any of these jobs so yeah. it was either based on reference or pure luck or in uh, uh, many a times it was like it was a fluke honestly speaking based yeah. on the uh, preparation that we are doing now so yeah. based on that it feels like pure luck sometimes it feels like yeah. uh, pure uh, honestly speaking pure speculation so yeah, yeah. yeah and uh, so just for my understanding like uh, so since you are now doing a structured preparation what is like your uh, eventual uh, goal per se like is there a list of companies that you want to get through do you have any dream company or like uh, actually i do uh, i honestly got into like uh, a few companies like uh, just a minute i think i yeah. set an alarm for this meeting which is okay yeah, yeah, sure take it yeah so i i mean it's 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 a structured preparation that is for a particular goal so i'll i'll ideally want to like get into one of the fan companies honestly yeah. or any of the startups that uh, because because uh, 10 years of experience is a relatively uh, higher number yes. of years so as to speak so i'll yeah. want to go into something that has relatively higher stability 
as yep. far as like the newer startups are concerned but primarily yeah it would be either the bank companies or one of the new startups that that i mean the likes of paytm the likes of like swiggy yeah uh, uber, uber ola not uber, uber yeah i think yeah yeah i mean any one of those would be uh, a dream company to go into i think basically uh, what i understand a good strong stable tech company i think that was yes. my goal when i was looking out yeah. yes exactly and understood and uh, have you like before you joined logic mojo and you did a structured prepare have you ever appeared for them before or any problems that you faced earlier so not necessarily for these companies but i just to test the waters i gave interviews for a few companies like uh, i mean i'm not sure if you know about thoughtworks but i gave okay, interviews yeah i know so it's it's a good greenfield service yes, yes, yes. so I, i i got through there but again it was not dsa oriented and then it was more along like object oriented programming or the work that i kind of do that i yep. traditionally do at work so yeah. it was more around design it was more around like uh, object oriented programming so i was okay there i i did okay there but for the fan companies honestly i didn't get either a, a courage or a chance mm-hmm. to like appear for them so i thought that it would be better if i like prepare properly yes. and then have a go at it yeah so, yeah. Uh, yeah i think that that makes so I'll, i'll just uh, like i'll just tell you some so i give you a brief about my experience mm-hmm. but a, like something uh, on the same lines that you mentioned so what what i have experienced over the years so i used to do the same thing so i got through rsa when i got through rsa i it was a campus placement campus okay. placements are mostly luck like there's a good question that you get and you clear and i was there for four years i was doing well then oracle was again i would say i mean it was very breezy i just went for an interview i had not prepared uh-huh. i got through i joined them similarly uh-huh. i was not planning to join walmart no structured pre- preparation nothing uh-huh. and um, i i remember i went for an interview and i had just quickly like one day before my interview i went through geeks for geeks and everything uh-huh. and then i went it luckily i mean some things fell into uh-huh. place yeah. my four questions uh, went fine and i got through walmart Mm-hmm. post that when i was then i realized post walmart so walmart was a e-commerce company i mean it's a great company but the work pressure and work life balance sometimes suffers yeah so i wanted to get into and it's not a technology company as such right it's a e-commerce company where tech is the second focus and your sales are the main focus sure. so i and microsoft had been a dream company for me along with a few others like uber was also in the list mm-hmm. so i started giving uh, interviews for good companies like paypal okay. and all and that's when i realized for the first time i didn't get through so i okay. didn't get through the first two three companies and uh, the way i was preparing back then was that uh, once the interview got scheduled and i knew that okay i have two weeks okay. i would open any of these random sites like geeks okay. or geeks site and i would read questions read okay. question read solutions and i would cover everything so in okay. my mind i would have covered everything okay. and the pattern was repeating i would go for interviews i would try and so i would do the brute force probably but i would never come up with the expected and these companies require you to come up with an optimal solution they would expect that mm-hmm. so uh, in fact eventually like after three four companies so i in amazon uh, i cleared around four rounds i didn't get through the bar raiser mm-hmm. and this was all on ad hoc preparation like so i did some system design because our at our experience system design also becomes very important true true it is a core uh, need for any company yeah. and uh, so that's when i then took a step back and then i started the streamlined preparation of going it chapter by chapter doing questions and and i think i gave you a gap in between of a month mm-hmm. and the strategy i took was i started giving after preparing for i think 2 to 3 months mm-hmm. i started giving some startups where i eventually didn't want to go uh, but yeah. i wanted that experience because yeah, i exactly. was not on any platform which was giving me a mock interviews and back mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. so i started giving these interviews i didn't get through some i got through some but that is how i eventually built on that confidence mm-hmm. and after a point i realized so there had been a downhill slope like not getting through paypal amazon and some other companies hacker and call so i remember but eventually after that one side cross these three months of and another thing uh, probably i would have talked about it later in our call but one thing one approach which i followed was suppose you are like in your case you are going through logic mojo as your source of yes questions so you will have at the end of the day say some 300 400 ds algo questions right Yeah, so, yeah. so this is a piece of advice I received from one of my friends, and I tell this to everyone who I'm basically helping out prepare. Now, so what he told me was the approach he took. He was using Lead Code, uh, and he was in Microsoft. He went to uh, Meta, I think, mm-hmm. a couple of years back. So there's a very st- standard approach where the first day, suppose you're doing three questions. Uh-huh. So now you would have already done quite a lot of questions in Logic Mojo. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, say you start with revising three questions. The first day you do three questions, and you code them. because mm-hmm. reading code is something which is a recipe for disaster like yeah, it will yeah. never end yeah so you code those questions now the next day when you come back to prepare and suppose you are targeting another three questions or two questions for the day just 
read the problem statement of the yeah, first three the questions. First, yeah. The ones yeah. that you had done the last day. Yeah. And don't try to memorize or recollect what you had written the last day, but just try to think of it the pretty abstract. Like, okay, how would I solve this today? Mm. Like, how would I, in your mind, just try to solve them. If you, mm -hmm. because sometimes for DP problems, for say a try problem, sometimes the solution doesn't hit you fast. Mm. If that is the case, just try and code it again. Okay. And not the code that you had written the previous day or say three days back. Just code it fresh. Remove your earlier code, code it fresh, mm -hmm. and then move on. So that way, suppose now on the fifth day, you would have already done 15 questions. Mm -hmm. so it's not like you will have to write down code for all 15, yeah. but mentally you will be able to relax, uh, revise. So this revision time, eventually you will it'll get optimized. I'm telling you, within a month or so, you will be in a pretty optimal state. You will know that, okay, so it's a two-sum question. I know I will do this even if I someone wakes me from sleep, I'll be able to do two-sum. Mm -hmm. But if it's a DP problem, like for me, DP was my weakness. Mm -hmm. I did I did and I revised so many DP questions, so many DP questions that eventually in a lot of my interviews there were DP questions which I had not seen. Mm -hmm. But there's a certain pattern to these okay. questions. So when you once you cross those 100, 200 questions and this revision, you will see that pattern. And so it won't happen 100 percent of time uh, the mm -hmm. times because another thing is which I strongly believe is that uh, the preparation is the foremost, but these interviews also have a certain amount of luck which is required. True. Sure. Even you can prepare the best you can, but on that day, the interview might be in some sort of a frame of mind. The question, you might be in some sort of frame of mind. You might not be that fresh, some office pressure, home pressure. So obviously keeping apart the luck part of it, but a structured preparation with revision uh, and sticking to some sort of a, like defining a boundary for the content that mm -hmm. you are, because otherwise there are thousands of resources online. Exactly. I mean, that's that's the problem that I have been observing as well. Yeah. There are too many like varied resources that you could potentially go through. And then you don't know. I mean, you see a, see a DSA sheet and you should see another sheet. And there are two problems that are different from the other sheet. So you yeah. think that maybe maybe yeah. the data that I have prepared is not sufficient. Uh, so. Exactly. I think yeah, it is the, yeah, I've been exactly on the same boat. But that's what I did. Eventually, I restricted my content to okay. a single source. Okay. And then I didn't care about, so... Suppose some day, some Sunday, some some day you have some time, or mm -hmm. probably in one of these startup interviews, you come to know of a new question, a new yeah, pattern, exactly. but well and good. Yeah. Yeah. But trying to cover everything uh, won't solve, like because it is unlimited now. Hacker yeah. rank, hacker earth, there are geeks for geeks, lead code. It doesn't end the list. So yeah, yeah so defining that and following the structure. So if you do 400 questions at the end of your preparation, mm -hmm. you should have done those 400 questions. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No matter how easy it is. One example that I have seen in my experience, again, like places where I got stuck over the years, like linked list questions are generally not very tough uh, because they involve a lot of code pointers. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I, so what I used to do is I never revised the linked list. I thought I'll do it. Mm -hmm. But there was this one, some not a very complicated question. I remember a question where I had to reorganize a linked list in a certain way, mm -hmm. even odd. But mm -hmm. when I, and this was back, like not in the time when I cleared Microsoft, but before that, when I was giving interviews randomly, I realized when writing down for, for linked list, the previous, the next, and those pointers that you have to maintain, right? Mm -hmm. You need practice to do that. I messed up one of my interviews on a linked list question, which I thought I would do any day. So that's, and post the structured approach of revising and picking up a certain set of questions, that is when I, re I realized that then you can start seeing a pattern and you would have coded so much that you won't be nervous. Mm -hmm. There can be a new question, 